Hi everyone, welcome back to Crafting at Whimsy Wonderland. My name is Stacy. I have a couple more calendar projects for you. These are both going to be Christmas ones. Uh, I'm using the Simply Blessed calendar. And the one I'm pulling out of that is the Christmas Good Tidings of Comfort and Joy. And I'm also using the Be Brave calendar. And pulling the Peace on Earth page out of that one. So I'm going to be using two of these wood grain charger plates from the Dollar Tree. I'm going to try something new that I haven't done. And so I have a package of these uh, round paper doilies. <clears throat> there's 32 and there's four different sizes. These came from the Dollar Tree. Everything in this project came from the Dollar Tree. I'm not sure if I need the big size or the size down. So I went ahead and bought the multiple pack because... I didn't know exactly what size I would need. So I'm going to pull the two big sizes out. I'm experimenting at the moment. Okay, so I'm going to use the big one on the plate. I found a pie pan that I can use that's round to cut my piece out. I'm going to cut with my scissors. If you have a circle cutter of some sort, you can go ahead and use that. I just don't have one. Do you want this edge to be as clean and neat as possible? Because we're hoping to not have to put an edging on this. Hoping to keep it simple. Okay, that's going to look really cool. All right, and then I need to do the same with my piece on earth. And this pan fits in there quite nicely. Here's the part I'm a little bit nervous about. And I don't want... Okay, let me go back. These are white and they're very thin. You can kind of see the yellow through it. And I can see all of the numbers... 18, 17 from the back of the calendar through these white pages. So this part I'm a little bit nervous about and I'm hoping that it works. It's the only way I can think of other than layering on yet another piece of paper and I really don't want to do that. So I'm going to take my black chalk paint with a very as dry as I can make it be and I'm going to paint the back being very, very careful. To not move it around on this yellow sheet. Um, I don't want the black to smudge on to the front. And now that I'm doing this, I wish I had done it before I cut my circle. So. In hindsight, learn from my mistake because the edges are curling and I am afraid that I'm going to end up with black paint on the front of my picture. So paint it before you cut the circle. And do it as dry as you can. And this might help with the wrinkles too. Interesting. Where it was curling, it now has laid back down as it's drying. I think that's interesting. I wasn't expecting that. Okay, I'm going to set this aside to dry. I'm going to grab one more piece of yellow paper. Definitely paint this before you cut your circle. I think it's just a bit a better practice. This is the first time I've done this, so. I do have a couple of projects that I didn't do this on, and I could see the numbers through it, and it was kind of disappointing after all the hard work. I think this is going to be a step that is worth the time and the effort. All right, now it needs to dry. 
And while it's drying, I'm going to go ahead and start Mod Podging on the doilies. Always make sure before you start with Mod Podge that your fingers are clean, because if they aren't, your fingers are going to stick to the Mod Podge, but if they aren't clean, the paint will most likely transfer from your fingers to the Mod Podge. So make sure you're clean. So these doilies are kind of pressed together, so you're going to have to make sure to get them apart. And that one tore, so be careful. We won't be using that one. If you can't find these doilies at your Dollar Tree, I'm sure you can find them at Walmart. Um, it says, let's see. These are a 12 inch diameter diameter and there's eight, yeah, six different styles. No, four different sizes, eight of each. And these ones measure 12 inches. The other ones were 10. I am using the matte finish Mod Podge. Now I've never Mod Podged a doily before. So this project is just a whole bunch of firsts for me. And I honestly do not know how it's going to hold up. Could be like my podging um, tissue paper. <laughs> I don't know yet. I am going to go ahead and cover the entire plate with Mod Podge. I know that my doily won't go. In fact, you know what? I think I'll do one where I cover the whole plate and one where I only cover the center. And we'll see which one comes out better. We'll experiment together. This wood grain is really soaking in the Mod Podge. Okay, the fun part is going to be that little ring in there. So get it centered and then push it down. <laughs> it's hard to get things centered sometimes. Okay, I'm going to lightly fold this in half. Trying to see where my center mark is. This needs to scoop just a little. Try not to pull it up as much as I'm pulling it up because that's just going to stretch your doily and make wrinkles happen. All right. Pressing it around. This is why you want clean fingers. <laughs> go ahead and push down. Once you get it into the groove of the plate, go ahead and push down the, oh, the edge. Don't keep your fingers in one place too long. Let's try doing this with a brush. I'm going to go ahead and coat the middle just to make sure that it's sticking down in all the places. The nice thing about having all these little cutouts in the doily is that where it needs to uh, kind of fold in on itself to fit the shape of the plate because of the dip. The holes are there and it's just happening on its own, which is good. All right, I'm going to let this dry. I want this to be completely dry before I move on with the next step. That's already starting to look pretty cool. It's kind of a shabby chic grandma's lace doily kind of effect. Let's just glue the middle this time and see what we get. We will glue down the edges, but let's start with just the middle. 
might be easier to get it centered. I don't know. Alright, I'm going to kind of, I'm not creasing this, I'm just kind of folding it to get it in centered. And I can kind of judge if it's centered by looking at the edges. Okay, and my is my margin about square, all the, uh, about equal all the way around. Okay. Now normally I use my brayer tool to get the bubbles out, but I didn't on that last one because I was afraid it would tear. But I'm seeing that it's maybe a little stronger than I thought. So with just the middle being glued, I'm going to give this brayer trick a try and see if it does work. And it appears that it is working. It appears. <laughs> lots of glue puddling at the edge and that's okay this is just a brayer tool if you've watched my channel you've seen me use it a lot um, it's part of the Martha Stewart collection and uh, I got it at Michael's and it's in their stenciling department uh, for getting your stencils down smooth before you um, paint them and if you can't find one at your craft store try anywhere that has wallpaper supplies and use a wallpaper brayer that is the same thing okay so now i'm just going to take my brush from the top and push the edges of the doily down into the edge of the plate just pushing it in there there's already glue there and extra glue came out of the middle when I was using the brayer, so there's plenty of Mod Podge to be had. <laughs> so push it in gently. Try not to hold it down and stay in one place too long because you don't want it to stick. Okay, I'm just going to kind of brush around the edge, make sure we're all down. Okay, now that's leaving it all wrinkly, and that's okay. Because now I'm going to paint underneath. I'm wondering if I even need to paint underneath. Or if it will just stick down by soaking through. So, let's just try by soaking it through. Some of it's going to go underneath anyway, because you've got all those little holes. So, I don't think we need to fuss with it as much as we're thinking. So, I'm just dipping and going over the top of the dry um, doily on the dry plate. And it seems to be sticking down okay. So, as it pops up, it gets glue under there and then... There's plenty of holes in there to get the glue under the doily, is what I'm trying to say, without having to what, brush down your whole plate. And if you've got somewhere that's sticking up, just kind of scrub a little under there. Straighten it out. It's all good. I'm just going to kind of smooth out my brush strokes, kind of going with the grain of the plate. Not really caring if they're all the same direction. And I'm going to go ahead and put a thin coat on the middle. Now that it's had time to sit in there. and I haven't seen any bubbles forming, so I'm going to go ahead and put a coat on there. I'm excited to see how these are going to turn out. I've, if I like it, I might do a lot of the Simply Blessed ones this way. From the simply blessed calendar because all of them are round i'm thinking the lemon one would look really pretty on a doily like this all right i'm just kind of in the mood for christmas and fall at the moment so i that's what i decided to start with all right 
Now I need to let that dry. Let's see how the other one's doing. The other one's still looking good. Hasn't bubbled up too terribly bad. So we're going to let those dry and then we'll come back and do the next step. But before I go, let's take a look at the other side of the calendar piece. Okay, so I have a little bleed through right there, but it's not completely dry yet. So once it's completely dry, I think it'll be okay. And here's the thing for one. Oh no, this is the good tidings one. Got a little bleed through there, but it's still, it's not completely dry. All right, I don't want to really use the heat gun on these. Um, I'm just afraid of what it might do to the paper. So these will set apart, set up aside and let them dry and we'll be back as soon as they're ready to go. All right, I think that um, these plates or these doilies are dry enough. They're not 100% dry, but the centers are dry enough to touch. I think we're okay. So if we lay this down, I'm looking at this going, I wish I had cut it a tiny bit smaller. I want it to fit inside of this circle. I'm thinking if I cut, aiming for the pine cones, there, that, that looks pretty good. Okay, let me measure this and tell you how big this circle is. This circle is eight and a half inches. Okay, so that gives you an idea of how much you want to do. And the same here. Just going to cut around the edge of the greenery. So my next step is I'm going to coat clear up to the edge of my plate with Mod Podge. I'm going to need to get some more Mod Podge. I keep saying that. <laughs> I keep saying that and then forgetting to get it when I go to the store. Alright. I'm just going to take my Okay, I'm going to look and make sure that my grain is going up and down on my plate because that's what I want. And then down in the middle. So this is coming up the edge of the plate a little bit and that's going to cause some wrinkles. But we're going to work with it. I think it'll be fine in the end. And then I'm going to go ahead and hit this with my brayer as best I can. Ooh, big wrinkle. I think this is a great way to get away without having to do a big fancy bow on your pieces. I get tired of everything having to have a big fancy bow. I love bows at Christmas, but there are times when it would just be nice to not have a bow on everything. They collect dust, they get squished when you store them. my fingers to make sure I'm getting all the way getting it into that curve of the plate that's the hardest part and getting it smooth that's why I cut the circle down I was just afraid I would get way too many wrinkles trying to come all the way up the plate okay there's a good size wrinkle right there Let's see if we can't roll that out always a good sign when you're rolling out a wrinkle and you get a little puddle of Mod Podge on the edge. 
that's telling you your your wrinkle moved and uh, smoothed out a little bit all right I'm gonna let this dry a little bit before I put the final coat of Mod Podge on top but look how cute that's looking how pretty is that going to be sitting? You can put a hanger on it. You can set it on a plate stand. That is just cute. All right, let's do the other one. Mod Podge puddling. That's a good sign. It tells me I'm getting it flat. And because I painted, I didn't even think about that, because I painted the backgrounds, I'm not seeing, I am not seeing those calendar letters and numbers coming through at all. I think this is going to be a good thing. And I think the paint might actually be keeping this from wrinkling as bad. I think these are wrinkling less than the square ones I do in the next video. Or in the last video, I mean. Alright, look how cute that one's looking. It's not even going to need a bow. I mean, you could put a bow on it if you wanted to, but I don't think it's going to need it. Um, I'll probably put a hanger on the back. Here is the item number for the wood grain chargers. In case you want to try to order don't know if they're available online or not so yeah these are looking really cute I'm going to let these dry and then once they're completely dry I will put the final coat on and we will be done okay I am back I don't know if you guys are like me and have multiple projects going on at the same time I am working on four decoupage projects making two videos at the same time, both using the calendar pages, but in different ways. And so if I start talking about one and I put it in the wrong order, please forgive me. <laughs> anyway, this was the last, this should be posted before and it's taking a plastic tray from the Dollar Tree and decoupaging on. And then, so that's what you're seeing up in the corner. And I also have a Thanksgiving one and then I have these two Christmas ones so anyway these are pretty much dry I'm going to go ahead and put the last coat of Mod Podge on so we can just get on with it because I have so many video ideas in my head to make for today using that uh, Dollar Tree Walmart and Dollar General haul that I showed you in my last video so I'm going to go ahead and coat the center of this with Mod Podge, sealing it in. And after this is completely dry, and with all these layers, it might take a little while. Um, once it's completely dry, I'm going to take it outside and spray paint it with a clear coat of matte finish. I believe it's Rustolian brand, but I also like the Krylon. Depends on what I can get at my Walmart when I go looking for it. Okay. So this one is done except for that spray and the hair. I really, really love how these have turned out with the doily because I really feel like I don't need to put a bow. I don't need to put any edge trim on that. I've been trying to come up with ways to use these calendar pieces that are a little less fussy and the doily is fussy, but it doesn't have a fussy bow. And I'm going to try this with my pizza pan crafts too because sometimes the pizza pan crafts, you get so much bow on there, you kind of lose track of what the craft is. And so I did a project, let me grab it for you, give you another idea. I did a project where I didn't want a bow and it was nautical themed. So I went with a knot. Okay, this one's done. I'm going to let it dry. Let me grab that other pizza pan idea for you. Now this is the first time I had done a pizza pan without a bow 
and um, without anything fussing about it. And this has become one of my favorite pieces of all times. In fact, I didn't even sell this one. I just plan on keeping it because I'm so happy with how it turned out. But check this out. It has a nautical rope, white nautical rope from the Dollar Tree. And uh, I took and looked up knots on Pinterest and made this knot and using two different kinds of rope. And then naturally the brown rope came out kind of higher than the, than the white rope down here. So I wasn't sure which one I was going to use as my trim. And it just worked out for me to use both one as a lower piece and one as a higher piece. And I think that just totally sets off this piece. And this has become one of my favorite pieces of all time. There's about six layers of paint on this, um, I keep saying arrow, but it's an anchor. Um, I started out with a gray, then I went with a little plaster, then a little light gray, and then some antique wax and Mod Podged over the top of everything. That's that little bit of sheen. And I just love the way that the Mod Podge pulled it all together. I was masking my lines and making the lines perfect, but when I peeled up the masking, it uh, peeled up some of the paint. So then I went and just freehanded my lines and purposefully made them messy so that it would look like a piece that had washed up on shore. So anyway, that's just another idea, some way you can get away with these round things and the calendar pieces without having to actually make a bow or anything like that. Try using a knot, try using two layers of rope and uh, see what you can get because um, it doesn't always have to be so fussy. And I just was getting really tired of all the fussy pizza pan crafts out there. So I went ahead and just made this one a little more simple. Um, but I just I really love how this knot turned out. And I wish I could have thought about how to put another knot down here, but that might have been too much. So anyway, that's just another idea for you. But uh, I don't think these are going to need anything else. If anything, maybe some holly and a berry right there. And I wouldn't, I don't, I'm not going to put anything on this one because it just doesn't need it. Okay, if you are one of those that has to have it three dimensional, put a, find a poinsettia that's the same size and put a poinsettia on top of each one of those poinsettias that's on the wreath. But other than that, leave it alone. Let it be what it is. Okay? You decide, you do what you like and what works for you and your decor. Um, these to me do say farmhouse. They just say a little bit more fancy farmhouse. These remind me of like my great grandma's hand crocheted doilies and you would totally find those in a farmhouse setting. So anyway, just some ideas of things I have done that uh, maybe you can use to give you some inspiration to change up some of the ideas and the things that you're doing because I don't know if you're like me but I get in a rut every once in a while where if I do the same craft over and over it just becomes monotonous and they all start to kind of look the same so all these calendar pages were all starting to feel the same to me on a square frame and and whatnot so this really just changes things up all right I'm gonna let these dry and we will be back all right i am back i've got about a 24 inch piece of buffalo check ribbon that i got at the dollar tree showed you that in my last haul and let's see i'm not going to be using this orange in this one because these are christmas but i'm going to flip this over making sure that i know where the top is and we're going to glue down and I'm just going to use hot glue for this because I'm just gluing to plastic. So I think that, ouch, I think that it will be okay. I'm gonna show you a couple of different ways. So this one, I've got the hanger kind of close. Okay. And on this one, I'm going to have the hanger be a little bit um, farther down. Now, this one is also going to go at a little bit of an angle. And this is also ribbon from the Dollar Tree. 
it's just um, it's green. I should have my finger protectors out, but I don't. <laughs> I rearranged my desk in my craft room, and now it's like, where did I put all that stuff? All right, this one's going to have the hanger coming down a little farther, so it's a little more at an angle. All right, now, I don't want to put a bow right on the piece, but I do want to put a bow on it. And I'm going to do a red, a green, and a black on both of these. These are also about 24 inches. So I've got a red, a green, and a black. I'm going to hold up my plate to decide where the center of the ribbon is. And once I have that center, I'm going to tie my stack of three ribbons around it, okay? And then tie a bow. Make sure your bow is nice and tight. And then Pull the three colored loops apart. And then you have a cute little hanger. You need to make sure that your ribbons are cut at an angle or that they are fishtailed. Either one will work. So that they don't ravel. You just want these loops pulled apart so that you can see all three colors when it's hanging, okay? And it'll hang from the knot. Okay, there's that one. I'm going to do the same with this one. All right, there you have it, my finished calendar projects using the charger plates from the Dollar Tree and instead of a fancy bow, using the doily to set them off on the charger. Let me know what you're thinking about this project in the comment section below. If you like this project, please give it a thumbs up. That helps my channel to grow and it lets me know what you like to see on my channel. All right, what, is this something you might give a try to? If you do, make sure that you let all those layers dry in between so that you don't get it too wet and soggy to where it wants to wrinkle. But I can't wait to do this process with a few other from the Simply Blessed um, calendar because all of them are round and I think this doily process will look really cute with a lot of the choices there. All right, this has been Crafting at Whimsy Wonderland. Thanks for stopping by. I'll see you next time.